the cell line, the LNCAP, in our lab every single week. We, we, uh, we, we do the PCR. We don't see proteins in that. It's not a PCR contaminant. We've, shown, we've done everything possible to rigorously control for contamination. We don't even have cell lines in the labs where we do the blood. We've sent the blood from independent phlebotomists to different labs around the world, and they find the virus there um, without, um, without any manipulation or passing through our lab. Um, there's just no evidence in our study for contamination. There's more evidence for a family of human gamma retroviruses that are involved in infecting humans and circulating in the population. I cannot address what's going on with sequences that I don't know. It's not sequences. It's it's with viruses, I'm sorry, with, virus, with viruses and proteins of sequences that I don't know. If, I don't if we get these sequences of these other viruses into the into GenBank where people can look at them, uh, then we can do. We put the phylogenetic analysis of it. Uh, John, uh, John yeah. you're not going to be here tomorrow. No, I would like to pick your brain to, to know what do you see as next steps for, for, for I, XMRB, I, 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 I see the I see the next step as, leave, as leaving ec, the virus that we know as XMRB behind. I don't. I just don't see. I don't see how that. Now that doesn't mean there's not another gamma retrovirus that is not sufficiently cross-reactive with the primers and things that have been used to not be detected. Um, I, I think the, um, I just, I, I, th I think, however, that enough evidence has been presented that there is some infectious cause here, and maybe another retrovirus, it's entirely possible that it's worth continuing to do it. I would say, however, that we are continuing to participate in studies like the blood working group studies, like, um, and, and a study that's enrolling in patients, seeing patients right now, um, at, uh, at NCI, the patients are coming in, are being collected patients who can, uh, have been told that they were XMRV positive um, by various assays. And uh, we are going to do a very thorough workup on these patients using exactly the same sort of uh, conditions that I mentioned, where every patient is, is uh, patients and controls are brought in, um, treated as, as much as possible blindly. At, at least every single sample that's taken is taken using exactly the same set of reagents and tubes and so on and so forth. And those are going. You're just going to work those up through all of the assays we have available at the NCI. And the NCI, I, would, I have to say, it's done a huge amount of work on this. It's taken a huge amount of, of resources and diverted from other things to, to work on this problem. Ever ever since even before the science paper appeared, Stuart Legrees, for example, who's here, has done um, an enormous amount of effort in, in kind of shepherding these studies and coordinating them across the whole across the whole institute. And these studies are going to continue to go on for looking specifically at XMRV for related MLB-related viruses and other things until we feel we've really, for sure, gotten to the, to the, to the bottom of it. The Ian Lipkin study, as far as I know, is still planning yeah. to go on where patients... If I, if, if, yeah, okay. if I can interject a second uh, now that we resolve this. Uh, now, now, I think, I think you're, you're, you're the data for the recombination uh, and your origin through... Uh, through the transgenic mice, or through the nude mice, uh, is, is, is very convincing. I, I, I have to say that. A and uh, what is difficult for me is the next step of how, how it contaminates the, the laboratories. And, you know, you can say, well, it's in a reagent, it's in a tube, but every laboratory, including the low laboratory, uses you know, multiple controls on every run, and they're always, always negative. And we have looked for, uh, he has looked for mouse genome first by a very, very sensitive uh, uh, nested PCR that was a hundredfold more sensitive than the uh, PCR used to detect the polytrophic uh, viruses. Uh, and did not find any genomic DNA. Then used your first IAP assay and then your improved IAP assay exactly as you gave us the formula and do not find any, any contamination. Now, you can't rule it out. You know, you can never rule out contamination 100%, but, but it isn't there, and I, and I still don't know why the negative controls in Judy's lab are negative and why on the panels that have been done thus far, she's been able to distinguish samples from patients versus negative control. 
all that be as may, I'm not denying that there may be contamination. So I just want to uh, put this in perspective, as, as Dr. Coffin has, has alluded to. There are two panels now that are well in process of being prepared, but have not yet been tested. The first is from NHLBI, taking patients that Judy has identified as XMRV positive, sending them to a central lab where they are being recoded or being coded and with appropriate controls that have been confirmed by many labs as to be being XMRV, XMRV negative. Those samples after the coding is done are going to be distributed to, to back to Judy, as a, but she won't know what they were, to low lab and to CDC. That's a rather small panel, but to look at, at, at that particular group. The NIAID Lipkin panel, I think, will be the definitive one because it, it is the starting point was to take patients from multiple different uh, CFS expert centers, uh, patients that have been very well pedigreed and followed, fit all the classic definitions. Those samples were drawn in large volume, uh, being aliquoted and made into different fractions and being sent as triplicate codes uh, to, to the same laboratories. Uh, and if they can't break the code, then that means there pr probably is no association, that the published associations are not real. If they do break the code properly and don't find the negatives and do find it in the patients, then you will know it's not just contamination. Uh, and then you go from there to, to look at causality issues. So the, this is really a critical piece that's coming down the pipe. Okay. Yeah, there is, there is an addition, uh, the, an NCI-sponsored study, uh, that, in fact, I think patients, blood being drawn from patients even as we speak, over just, just over across the street at the clinical center, um, uh, which will um, do a, a very intensive workup on, on a relatively small number of patients and, and match controls. That, that, as I say, is being worked up now, and the result of that will probably be out, uh, be available before any of these other studies are done proceeding quite rapidly. Okay. Other questions? It's yes. Just that it's never been addressed, the, the fact that all of our patients and controls and studies now from at least six studies from thousands of patients around the world, the patients are infected, the virus is isolated proteins, not PCR, not sequences, and immune response to multiple proteins has, is far more evidence that there's a human gamma retrovirus infection associated this, with this disease than it's any kind of a contaminant, especially since no infected cell line has ever been used in our laboratory. Uh, and, and Has no cell line ever, ever been used in your laboratory? Ever no, no XMR. There are some lines. There are some lines of LNCAPs that are contaminated. Ours are not. With this we do virus. every single week. There are some we lines. Of, the the some lines of jerk cats are contaminated. There we, are we many, don't have jerk cats growing in our laboratory cell, where we isolate these viruses. And okay. How about, how about, how about uh, we're going to. We John and John and Judy. Okay. Thank you very much. This is exactly what we're we needed to hear, though. This session, I want to thank the uh, the session chair. I want to thank Dr. Alter and uh, uh, Kathy Laughlin for for uh, moderating this session. But let's give them a hand and thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Our next session is on uh, a new topic, a relatively new topic uh, to biology. It's referred to as systems biology.